Today, I'm going to be going through the creepiest anime I've ever seen, but first, thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. NordVPN has 5200 plus servers in 60 countries. Find a server near you for better speed or in a faraway location for more content on streaming services like Netflix and Crunchyroll. You can use it on six devices and it's available on every major platform from Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, Linux, and even Android TV. Open the map, click on a location, and you'll be connected in seconds. It's that easy. Click the link in the pinned comment and description below and use the code Alex Enterprises. It's risk-free because it's satisfied or refunded for the first 30 days. Thanks NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Anime is great in that so much of it is a product of its time. The economical boom of Japan that produced countless OVAs is seemingly endless and it also really sealed an era of anime into history that separates it from that which came before and probably changed everything that's come since in ways we can't possibly imagine. There's a whole plethora of mad, crazy, experimental OVAs, specials, and movies that would pave the way for many of today's works. For one, we probably would never have gotten Catsoup. From 2001, Catsoup is a silent, short, surrealist anime film that focuses on two cats. One that loses their soul, and one that's trying to get it back to them. The series is based off of the works of Nekojiro, a pen name which literally means Catsoup. Nekojiro's artwork is every bit as surreal as the Madhouse short film that followed it. I recommend seeing it first yourself before this video, you can even find it on YouTube these days, it's not been distributed very well in the West. But I'll be going through the whole thing here. The music by Yutaro Teshikai is made up of an assembly of distorted instruments which, like most surreal art, complements the images well and gives off a unique and abstract feeling to its audience. And the overall film comes and goes, leaving you with a vague sense of something bigger. It's creepy in many ways, but never really outright scary. There's a strange, timeless nature to the entirety of this film's presentation. Its colour scheme, its blend of styles and cultures makes it appear like a true surrealist painting from the likes of Salvador Dali, even wandering itself into a desert landscape filled with equally absurd characters. This is normally the part where I'd run you through the plot, but it's purposefully constructed in such a way that it's not something I can convey to you with words. Some shots and some scenes are there to evoke a sense or a feeling of what has happened rather than the event itself. In the beginning, when a young cat falls into water, it's just something that happens, irrelevant to the plot almost, as it's seen outside the water again straight afterwards. Already, that young cat, called Nyata, has drowned and died, having passed on due to the negligence of his troubled family, his father daytime drinking, and his mother busy doing tasks whilst ignoring his sibling, Nyako, as well. It's easy to think that Nyata is still alive because he turns up later, but when the two are in the streets and a Buddha comes, it's metaphorical of a spiriting away. Time then goes backwards to show the father finding Nyata's drowned body indicates that what we've been seeing is perhaps more spiritually happening than it is physically happening. The reason Nyako can see and still interact with Nyata is, in my mind, due to the superstitious nature of their species. The supernatural and paranormal is crossed by even Nyako because of the closeness that cats already have with the beyond. The parents being unable to see this is because of their own problems. Being too drunk and literally not wanting to see the living of the two negates this extra sense. Instead of taking Nyata, however, the Buddha takes the soul of Nyako. It's because of this that Nyata then goes on a quest to find and restore Nyako's mind. Nyata leads Nyoko to a circus in which an assistant is mutilated multiple times before an audience that stares on in indifference. A magician then conjures strange and unnatural life forms, but ends up killing it when he tries to evoke too much. The creature's remains destroy the circus tent and transition into a sea on which the two cats travel by boat. The scene of Nyata pooping into the sea and the fish feeding on his waist is indicative of this whole process. The circle of life and death is all around the two and it pervades the narrative to convey that they are very firmly in a more spiritual plane of existence at this point. Eating meat and losing an arm are further points to this as this sea disappears and the two are left in a desert. They come across a series of mad characters, a seamstress who harvests body parts from passers-by, a mad chef who pulls a Hansel and Gretel on the two, and then a water elephant that causes the fabric of existence to collapse. A weird new world of smoke, trees, and solid waves emerges before everything resets 
and the two find themselves back on the boat, the both of them reunited at last. I find this whole sequence to be a kind of rite of passage, of entry into the last and deepest regions of the spiritual world. Things start to really resemble traditional surrealist art, as images of the magician from the circus appear once more, for a flash. It's literally half a second, blink and you'll miss it. It insinuates his godlike role in this story, or perhaps a more sinister role than that, the earth literally on his dinner plate. When the cats return to their home, the sad reality is that whilst Nyako finally got her soul returned to her since it was stolen by the Buddha, Nyata is still dead from drowning at the beginning of the film, and had been this whole time. The only reason the two spent that last time together being due to the dead Nyata and the lost soul of Nyako residing in that same spiritual world. The family disappear one by one as Nyata crosses fully into the separate realm of the dead. And conversely, at this point I'm sure the others would stop seeing him. The credits show this faded memory of the family together taking a picture on the beach with a slow music box rendition of the main theme. It's a short memory, it only lasts a couple of moments, but it's replayed over and over as though the music box is reaching the end, twisting one last time to replay the last couple of seconds, again and again. You can almost feel the yearning to go back, to live in these memories through these credits, the twisting of the crank being pulled again and again, showing a little more each time. In a surrealist way, it kind of adds to the music and makes a perfect harmony of nostalgia, sadness, and longing. What does this add to the story though? Is this the ghostly memory of Nyata thinking back on his family, despite how dysfunctional it was, remembering the good days? Maybe it is, but maybe it goes a little deeper. On May 10th, 1998, Neko Jiru, the manga artist herself, unfortunately passed away after taking her own life at the young age of 31. It's tragic that somebody with such an inspiring talent with such fascinating works is no longer with us. Her manga was filled with this cute art style but was comically charged with this cruelty and violence and death. Watching this fascinating documentary online about her death seems to bring things into perspective for me. Where her manga was a reflection of her fascination with death, the film Catsuit pays homage to her writing and sends off her work in a journey through life and death. A journey that transcends into the beyond and is more about connection. In a way, it's metaphorical to the fans and talent behind this work connecting to Nekojiro and reflecting their own connection to it. Much like Nyata and Nyako, this was a journey made for her. Thanks to my patrons for continuing to support me. The script for the next video is available now and early access to the video will be up shortly. To find out what that is, go check out my Patreon. And if not, then like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching everyone, and have a happy Halloween.